Okay, so I've been playing around with my Raspberry Pi 3B and trying out different operating systems. And I thought I'd try Lineage OS because Android is quite a lightweight operating system. I did start with a Samsung Bar USB stick, but it was really quite slow. And I was surprised because I've had good performance on a Raspberry Pi 4, but then we are dealing with USB 2 sockets on a Raspberry Pi 3B. So I then tried an NVMe drive, and to my surprise, it is actually a lot quicker. It's not quick by any means, but it is actually a lot quicker than the Samsung Bar. And I was just thinking the limitation of USB 2 would mean that it wouldn't matter between the two, but it must be something about the NVMe uh, even though the sequential speeds aren't really that fast because they're limited, uh, the NVMe is just, just much better performance. It's a bit overkill, you would think, for a Raspberry Pi 3B. It makes uh, a good difference on a Raspberry Pi 4 and a huge difference on a Raspberry Pi 5. So I'm using a micro USB to USB-C adapter with an official Raspberry Pi 5 power adapter. Uh, I've got Ethernet connected. This is my Xbox controller. Uh, it basically makes this wireless, but you can just plug it into a USB socket. And I've got a USB A to C adapter going to my little Orico NVMe Caddy. So let's have a look at the OS. So if I press space, I can then log in reasonably quick with a four digit passcode. You can see it's loading up there. Um, and I can swipe up from the base uh, to go through all of the apps that are here. Uh, and also, you know, the normal buttons, home, back, multitasking as well, so we can fully close things as well. I was trying to get a power button working, which I have done on a Pi 4, but I couldn't get it working on this, but I didn't try for long. So if we try this BB Racing, I'm using my controller for this. It comes all pre-set up for the controller. You don't have to do anything with a, an Xbox 360 controller. And I think it's crashed, so I'm just going to try and close it down. So swipe it away. Um, and I'm actually going to delete it because I've got an APK for this. Yeah, I had a load of APK files and uh, I basically picked much older ones hoping that they would be easier to run. But Android is a bit fussy with older APKs. Let's have a look if I've got it in my files app. Now we'll be cutting loads of bits out because it is sluggish and unresponsive and it varies at different times, it gets much worse. So if I have a look in the downloads folder here. So I've been using, ah, oh, here we go, it is in here, brilliant. Uh, so I've been using the Aptide store, I've been using Up to Down store, and also APK Pure store. The stores are all awful on this. Uh, I'm definitely not using Google Play store um, because all of the things on Consta Kang's page said it got much, much worse. And that's because Google Play services runs lots of things in the background. They're not lots of things compared to a desktop OS but for a device with only one gig of RAM, uh, these newer versions of Android, and this is, I think, Android 10. I'll have a look in a minute. So I've just found out this version is a newer version, and also when you try and install it, it tries to use the stores to install it. So I'm gonna delete all the stores that I've got in here. So up to down, let's uninstall that. Because they kind of take over and they, they sort of have a look at your app and they say, oh, you've got a newer version of this, would you like to update? Um, loads of the updates didn't work with the Aptide store and um, the up to down store also did similar things. I think this version of Android, which isn't officially supported anyway any, anymore and hasn't been for a long time, is miles away from the version on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is very stable and really nice to use. Right, so I've got no stores on here now, I think. You see I've got folders for doesn't run and things like that. Uh, just double check that there's no uh, APK pure store on there. Yeah, there's not. So if I use the browser, um, and one of the tips was to use the Opera mini browser. I didn't find that was faster at all. I found that the inbuilt browser was better with this configuration. So let's go up to down store beach buggy. So if you go for older versions, and I think I might have gone for the oldest version possible. And also rather than XAPK, which usually needs an app to install, if you get just an APK file, that tends to be better. In fact, I probably went for this one because it was Android 5 and up and I'm on Android 10. Let's try that one. 
So it opens up and you'll get a bigger box to be able to download, which is this one. It's only 84.52 megabytes, but that's smaller than the other one that I had, so the latest version. So let's download that. There are times when it doesn't feel that slow, but there's other times when it just almost comes to a grinding halt. So it should be downloading if I swipe down from the top left. Oh yeah, download complete. So we click on that and after a while it starts to install. It's come up with a message, app not installed. Let's close down the browser. Close down this files app. And if we scroll up, it is there. <laughs> okay. Hopefully this is the older version. I am older than 16. And all the menus and everything feel really quite snappy. Whether when Android starts a game, it really um, takes hold of all the resources or something. Let's get that mouse pointer out of the way. And I don't know if you're getting sound, but uh, I'm not. I've put it as HDMI sound, so it will get it with the capture, but I've turned the sound right down. Hopefully it will be a reasonable amount of mix. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty responsive. It's, it, it's, uh, it is playable. Oh, apart from whatever's happened there. What's Trebuchet? So I've gone for an older version here, uh, which I'm downloading. So 1.1, which is from October 2014. Yeah, that didn't come up with an error either, did it? So let's hit it, hit open with that little tab there. And it crashed, but it might work the second time. Okay, so it doesn't work on this one either because it wants to download something and it looks like it can't get a hold of that resource. Expansion file. Okay, I'm going to try older versions again and I reckon I maybe didn't scroll down another page. So maybe I went for the oldest one on this page. In 2019, the pie was from 2017. 79, so it's a bigger file, so hopefully it'll have whatever track data it was trying to get from an external source and install. That's going reasonably quick. Okay, so I'm going to close down the browser and launch the app. Yeah, so this is loading. It doesn't want to try and find some tracks from an external source. Okay, is this going to work? It let me skip past that. It's letting me skip past this. Yeah, that feels all right. Okay. Am I supposed to crash through these boxes? Oh, no, you're not. Right, these are the bits I'm supposed to pick up. I could read the tutorial. I have played this before. Uh, it's been around for years, and it and it actually is quite a nice playable game. But as you can see, speed-wise, pretty reasonable, really. How do I use my weapon? Yeah, that's not struggling. Definitely worth the wait. But when you get really quite slow performance and then you try a game and how well optimized certain games are, it is quite amazing really. I don't know what button I've, I use for my weapon. Oh, it was that one, whatever X I think it was. There you go, a bit of slowdown when it's going very fast, but still pretty enjoyable and still playable. So I have overclocked this. Uh, if we go to ADA64, I'm running at 1500 megahertz, which is the same as I was using Raspberry Pi OS in one of my previous videos. Uh, so we can see here, uh, we've got, this is the drive, 128 gig. We've got a gig of RAM. Some of it it uses for the GPU. And the CPU is running at, yeah, 1500, as you can see here. So let's close that one down and show a little bit of video. Amazon Prime was working. I tried out the live TV channels and I thought it was all right. So I'm signed into my Amazon account, and if I go for live TV, and you can see various different things come up here, and I can scroll through quite reasonably. I wonder what I wouldn't be, what, what would I be allowed to show? Let's just go with CNN and see if uh, I can show a bit of that. So you can see it comes up on here, freebie with ads. Okay, so these are some of the adverts that it's playing before it plays the content. As you can see, it's definitely opted for quite a low resolution, but it's working. I think that looks all right. I can't hear the sound again because I put it through HDMI, but hopefully you're getting sound. The sound is turned very low. So if I press escape and that will come back out of that. 
Not sure what it will be like for streaming content. So if I go to home and how do I get back to Prime? Is it Prime maybe? Yeah. So let's see if there's anything here that I could show a bit of. The option to cast to a Chromecast device has come up. And I can scroll through this. Come on, there must be, I don't know, documentaries or something like that, which would be okay for copyright strikes to just show a little bit. Oh, home improvement, something like this, I could probably do a little bit of. Again, I'll obscure some of it. So let's just start playing more adverts. Oh, look, Snapdragon processors. Okay, it's pretty low res. Um, again, well, I'm looking at it on a 24 inch screen and I'm about two feet away. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty soft, but it is working. So if you needed to play something in the background or something, then I was, I was a little bit surprised that that worked all right, really. A lot of the games were touch enabled games, even though quite a lot of these games are joypad games on iOS. Some of the Android games aren't. I mean, something like Vector does work. Uh, and you can use it because you can use the mouse to use the touch controls. And again, this was one of the APKs I downloaded, one of the old versions. So let's just skip past all that and hit in play. See, the menus are nice and snappy. I'm leaving this bit in real time and it's working well. So jump. I'm guessing it's that. And then roll and then jump again. Jump again. Yeah, that's working with the mouse. That's not too bad. It's a cool little stylized game, this, uh, and it is enjoyable. I mean, it obviously is designed for touch, but you can use it with a controller on some platforms. But yeah, that's definitely working fine. And let's just try a bit of the web browser and we'll try a bit of YouTube. So YouTube, Lee, PSP, Video, HDR. Let's just play a bit of that. Yeah, so it's on 480 at the moment. If we turn on Stats for Nerds, and see how that's coping. So it is dropping frames, but it looks pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's not dropping very many frames. Now I'm not using the mouse or anything. Uh, if I go for full screen, so hovering doesn't, oh yeah, it does. It's just a bit unresponsive. Right, let's see. And it does something weird for full screen. I'm not sure why we've got such a big border, but uh, what is it dropping? So 84 dropped. Yeah, 480 is, is usable. Again, a lot of this is how far away you are from the screen and also what sort of size screen you're using. And are you just using it to, I don't know, have uh, video playing in the background? Now, if we go to Consta Kang's page, this is where I downloaded it. If you just click on any of them, you can then pick the Raspberry Pi 3 version. Amazingly, people have got it working on Raspberry Pi 2, but I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, so if we go for Raspberry Pi 3, I mean, it depends what you're doing, I guess. You know, if you're just using it to play a bit of music, maybe it would be okay, because as you could see, it was playing video. Yeah, so the version that I've got is this one, Android 10, and mainly because I couldn't get the USB boot on Android 9. I did try all the normal steps that you try to get USB boot, but it didn't seem to work with Android 9, and it, it, I think it was announced officially for Android 10. But there's loads of great information in these pages, so if you, if you click one of the operating systems, uh, I mean, I could try the much older version on an SD card, and if you scroll down through, lots of information in here, uh, and obviously the download is there as well, what, what's working, what's not working, but also there's comments at the end of it as well, so people have got you know things that they've tried and, and suggested and so on, various different shortcuts. I didn't get the three and a half mil working, but then I haven't tried this three and a half mil jack on this Pi 3B Plus. I've only just recently got it. It's a, I did a video on it because it's a Brazilian one. So these comments here, yeah, very useful. Really, really enjoyed looking through those and seeing what people were getting. And some of these are six months ago, but some of them are you know, back when it came out. So what I'm gonna do is shut this down, boot up with Raspberry Pi OS, just to show the change I made to the config. So I press F5. Pop my SD card in, which has got Raspberry Pi OS on it. And then I can boot that up. So let's go off and on again. So that'll boot from the SD card by default, but I've still got this attached so I can access my NVMe drive. So if we have a look here, uh, basically these folders that have shown up are the external drives, so the NVMe drive. Android Kit creates 
a few different partitions. Uh, if I launch Gparted, so one of the things you have to do after you first boot in Android is to expand the partition. And to do that, you pick the drive. So this is the SD card that's running Raspberry Pi OS at the moment. This is the external drive, the NVMe drive. When you get it, this line will be all the way down here and we'll need expanding. So you right click and resize, drag it all the way out to the end and then hit the tick and that will resize the partition. I'll have shown it in a lot of my other Android videos on Raspberry Pi 4. The other change I made was to the boot partition and we're looking for config.txt and you can see in here, so ARM frequency 1500, core frequency 400, GPU 400, uh, over voltage of four. So that's the only thing I've changed to try and make it a little bit snappier. And of course it's worth showing Android on a touchscreen display because it definitely is more responsive. It, it, it is just nicer to use. And uh, if we scroll up through to show all the apps, uh, I've got Spotify on here. And if we try my library, it is a bit slow. But uh, if we try, let's just play something. If I play it on the little tiny speaker of this monitor, if it, if it shows up on this, let's see what happens. Uh, here we go, here's sound. Yeah, so sound is working. Again, I can't play that. Uh, let's close that down, which is always nicer with touch because you can swipe it away. Oh, and I've got something else still launched here at the moment. So the web browser was running at the same time. And have we got any apps that are worth looking at for touch? Let's try a bit of Happy Wheels. And we've got four different controls on here, so we can lean forward and back, and we can go left and right. Oh, that was lucky. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine with the touch, no worries with that. Oh, where's jump, there's jump. Yeah, no problem at all. So I was definitely hoping that Android was gonna run better on the Pi 3B, but if you run a version of Android that works better than this, and maybe from an SD card, uh, let me know in the comments if you use it on a Raspberry Pi 2, and what you use it for, I'd be interested to find out. But uh, it was fun trying it out, but I would say Pi 4 is probably about where you should start using Android, unless you've got something specific that's very low resources that you need to do. I was trying to get it to run on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W because this is similar architecture to a Raspberry Pi 3, bit, but I never got Android to properly boot on it. Um, but now that I've seen this running, I'm probably not that bothered. Uh, I don't think I'll try and do something with a handheld or anything with a Zero 2W. Maybe the next version, if it's the same sort of power as a Pi 4, might be ideal for Android. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.